2000 Chevy Malibu with a 3100 engine. And what we have is a mass airflow trouble code, a P0102. Uh, we've done some of these before. I've shot a couple videos on GM mass airflows already, but I think this is a good one, so I want to show it. P0102 mass airflow circuit signal low trouble code. So next thing we're going to do is go to our data pit and see what our mass airflow sensor looks like on the scan tool. That's going to be the next easiest step to do. All right, you see our, our two data parameters for our mass airflow sensor um, is our mass airflow grams per second to the left and our mass airflow HZ or frequency to the right. Uh, go ahead and start the car for me. This thing should run about 2,000 hertz, 2,500 hertz at idle. As you can see with the engine running, we got no signal at all. So what that means is our next step is we got to go to the mass airflow sensor and do some voltage checks at the sensor. Okay, I'd shut it off, turn the key back on. All right, we're going to the sensor next. Okay, the first test we're going to do, we're going to monitor the mass airflow signal wire and that is this yellow wire. I already have it T-pinned and um, I'm using a scope going to the signal wire of the mass airflow and the scope negative lead is going to battery ground. So scope positive lead to the signal wire, scope negative lead to battery ground. This is a zero to five volt square wave. Uh, it is a pull down design circuit. I mentioned this in a previous video. Circuit design is critical on this. You need to know that. So we're gonna go to the, to the lab scope now and we're looking for a zero to five volt square wave pattern on this sensor. So I'm gonna to go to my lab scope, go to DC volts, and you can set this up different ways. I'm just gonna go straight to it with the scope. And that doesn't look like anything we should have on this circuit. We have about nine volts average, 9.5 volts, and all kind of interference and noise in that, in that circuit. It should not look like that. Should be five volts. Computer sends five volts to the sensor. Sensor pulls it to ground. I'm gonna unplug this connector. This should be five volts with the sensor unplugged. And it is five volts with the sensor unplugged. So what that means is our computer is fine. Our wiring's fine. Our focus is on this mass airflow itself. Before we call a bad mass airflow sensor, we need to check the mass airflow powers and grounds. I'm just gonna keep you guys on this screen. I'm just gonna move the T-pin to the two other wires. So I'm on the red wire now. This is the power feed wire for this mass airflow sensor. Have a little bit of difficulty with the T-pin here. All right, there's battery voltage. We have 11, 8, 11, 9. Battery's a little bit weak on this. We got a pretty, get, pretty bad glare on the screen. That's better. All right, so we got 11.9 on the battery. I'm okay with that. Sensor ground is next. This ground should be less than 100 millivolts, less than 0.1 of a volt. And you see that same noise we had in our signal wire. We have the same noise in the sensor ground. This is a problem. This is not a bad sensor. What we have is a bad sensor ground. Key on. Voltage drop test, we're loading the circuit, the mass airflow is alive, we're sending power to it. There is no ground on this mass airflow sensor. That sensor gets its ground at the computer, so this is either gonna be a computer problem or it's gonna be an open in this ground circuit for this mass airflow sensor. So we're gonna do a little visual inspection next, see what we find. Good. All right, back to our ground voltage that's high right here. I uh, wanted, wanted you guys to get a shot of this, and I don't know where the problem's at yet, but I think it's probably going to be valuable for you to see maybe my thought process on locating this problem. I'm not using a wiring diagram, so I might be a little bit off in some of the stuff I'm saying, but let's see how this goes. Uh, so come down here now and turn your light on too. Okay, good. So I'm on my mass airflow. I'm on the ground wire. That's where we got that reading. 
That is a sensor ground. Now typically, we share sensor grounds with all the other sensors. Now sometimes they can run individual grounds. I'm not sure if this one does or not. I don't have a diagram in front of me, but um, I'm pretty sure that these are shared grounds. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go to another sensor that's easy to get to. And in this case, it's gonna be my intake air temp sensor. And uh, I'm gonna go to the same black white wire at the IET sensor and just get a reading on that and see what we got. And there's my IAT ground. Nope, lost my black lead here. All right, there's my IAT ground. That's reading 0.13. Come up here, take a look. So we're reading 0.13 of a volt. And turn that light off. There you go. 0.13, that's a little bit high, that's 130 millivolts, but you see we don't see that same ground noise that we had on the mass airflow sensor ground. So um, I'm saying our problem, if you kind of put the camera back down here, just stay zoomed out there, not zoomed in too far. Our problem, I, I believe, is gonna be right in here. If this mass airflow, it looks like maybe there's some damage in here. Um, gotta turn your light on. Well, that air ratchet's annoying. Okay. In any case, here's the mass airflow here. Just stay in one place, don't pan. Just stay zoomed out. Here's my IAT sensor. These probably are gonna share a ground at some point. I'm not sure where in this harness. I'm guessing it could be pretty close to right here. So I'm just doing a visual first. If these end up splitting, then we'll probably have to get a diagram and, and maybe attack this a little bit differently. Yeah, they're not spliced right there. So I'm gonna have to get a diagram. Uh, I plugged my mass airflow back in. I'm gonna just go back here a little bit further and see if I see the same ground issue. And I know some of you guys, you know, want me to use a tone generator, and I, I would if I had one. I don't have one, so I don't have that option. Um, I think a diagram is gonna be key now because I need to know if this ground is by itself or if it's shared with other sensors. I need to know another location to go as I don't have a tone generator, I'm gonna do this the old school way. So diagrams next, go ahead, pause it. All right, this goes to show you, you can't go by memory all the time. You see on this uh, diagram that this mass airflow sensor has its own designated ground. They're not shared with other sensors. So I was wrong about that. Uh, but this ground is G125 on the front of the engine. So uh, we have a bad ground there. Let's go look, see if we can find it. All right, we found our problem. There is a main ground splice connector right here, and it's unplugged. Uh, I'm surprised there aren't some other issues with this car. I can't believe the car even runs, truthfully. I don't know what all shares that ground splice right now, but uh, the white part of the connector with the pins, that's actually bolted to the bell housing, and the black connector is supposed to be plugged into that. So uh, that is our problem. We need to plug that back in and see what happens. All right, I got that ground connector plugged back in. I think what happened uh, is when this engine mount was replaced, this looks like a new engine mount to me. Somebody damaged this uh, this ground connector and um, that's what caused it. So, so it's probably gonna need to be replaced. It's really not holding very well, but that's what happened. Somebody changed the mount. They weren't very careful. But lesson learned for you parts changers out there. You know, you can't change a a part based on a trouble code, you get a PO102 code, nine out of 10 times people are gonna to wanna to replace that mass airflow sensor and uh, you would not have fixed it on this one. Shows the importance of checking your power, checking your ground, going through some basic flow, very easy checks, very easy to identify we had a bad ground on this.
and um, that's going to take care of it. So we'll get some uh, after shots on the scope and, and that'll be it. Um, just a little bit more while we're waiting for our scope to load back up here on the history of this car. You see the battery's brand new. Uh, got info that the starter was replaced as well. And um, the battery keeps going dead, which I didn't, I wasn't aware that that was a symptom on this too. All of this is related. Uh, as soon as we plugged that ground back in, I heard the alternator start to hum. Our battery voltage came up. And so, you know, again, just some simple voltage checks in this field. You know, instead of being a parts changer, too many of them out there, but I guess that's why we're here, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we're going back to the to the mass airflow. We're T-pinned right now on our ground wire, which is our middle black wire. And go ahead and pick, uh, pick lab scope and volts DC. And what do we have on that number? Point, point 0.54? Yep. I don't like that. As far as the ground goes, point 0.5 is high. And that's that ground connection down there. They're all green and corroded too, and that connector isn't real good. Um, go, to our, um, go to our signal wire now. We should have a signal now on the yellow wire. This should be an on-off square wave. Go ahead and start the car. It should be a very fast signal. All right, and that's a little bit of scope aliasing going on right now. Um, change your time base for me. Hit that fingerprint button at the bottom right. And change that 100 milliseconds down to like 10 milliseconds. All right, good. And go back. So there you go. There's our zero five volt on off mass airflow signal. Um, things running a little bit funny right now, but I'm sure there's some memory corrections that are taking place right now. Some fuel trim that we're probably way out of whack that's in the process of relearning. But again, lesson learned. You got a bad mass airflow signal. Uh, circuit design is key. Knowing it's a five volt pull down design circuit. That's section two in my book. Uh, we also have mass airflows, how to check them. I have a, a whole section on mass airflow sensors. You got no signal or signal's out of range, check your power, check your ground. And what we saw in this case, we had a bad ground. We had a bad block ground, trace it to a block ground. You know, do some simple checks. Don't just throw parts at the car. That's it, bad ground, and that ground is not 100% yet. Our ground voltage is still high. That connector needs to be replaced to take care of this 100%. That's it.